Hi, this is Matt from Audio Plugin Deals. Today we're looking at the huge 60 gig Miroslav Philharmonic Orchestra from IQ Multimedia. Let's have a look at it. Right, so first up we'll start with the installation process, which I know can be quite tricky sometimes with IK products. So the first thing you want to do in this case, and in most cases in fact, is start with the IK Multimedia's product manager. So this is it, open on the screen. Then we go to the top right and click register. And then we paste in this serial number that you got. Mine is obviously blurred here. Then we click on register. And then after it's done its thing, it will say register here. And then up the top here, you see a little red dot to say Miroslav Philharmonic is authorized correctly. And then once you've done that, normally you would come across to the right here and you would click on install. However, we're not going to do that. And the reason is because of an issue that I encountered, and I believe it's a very common issue, Version 2.6, which is the latest one, has a problem sometimes triggering or loading the philharmonic2.pak file. Now the workaround for that is to go to the IK Multimedia website under my products, click on past releases, and then here we have version 2.06, which is the one we would have installed had we done it through the product manager, but also the important one, version 2.05. And the reason why this is important is because to fix that .pak file issue, you need to install 2.05 first, and then you later update with 2.06. So download 2.05, and then also download 2.06. And once you've done that, go to your download location, and as I said, install 2.05 first, and then install 2.06. Now this is optional, of course, you can choose just to risk it and go for 2.06 or you can play it safe and do 2.05. The installation process for both of these is identical. So given the fact I don't need to roll back, but I do want to show you the process, I'm going to use 2.06. So the process is quite straightforward. This is on Windows, obviously it's different on Mac. Choose the type that you want to install. I only need VST3. Click on next. Now the next window is for VST2, despite the fact I chose no on the previous window. So just leave it as the default. And then click on next and then choose the location for VST3. My location is as follows, but if you don't have a customized one, just leave it as the default. Click on next, click on install and let it do its thing. And then next is the authorization manager. Now this is the second point I want to highlight. I personally haven't needed the authorization manager to authorize any IK multimedia products. However, I know many people do. And to be honest, I can't explain why that is, why some people do and some people don't. But what I will say is, if you are having problems authorizing, then it's probably because you've not installed or activated via the authorization manager. So install this now just to be safe. And finish. And then the final one is the custom shop, which they want you to install also. So install that. And then we're done. Now the next thing you want to do, basically the final step, go back to the My Products page and then we go to the sounds download. And on this page is where we have the 60 gig of sounds that you need. So on the left is Mac, on the right is Windows. You can only do 10 at a time. So just select them all, as I said, 10 at a time or whatever you're feeling confident with and then download. And as I said, because it's 60 gig, you may need to come back after a little while. And then once you have them, as you can see here, I have this 17 files. And then once you've done that, click on the file, click on install, extract all, and then choose a the location for where you want it extracted. I'm obviously just going to show you one because it takes quite some time. Right, so once you've done that, find the location of where you extracted it, click on install, and it will guide you through the process. Continue, agree, should you wish, and choose the location of your Sample Tank 3 library. Now it's also worth reiterating at this point that Philharmonic is its own instrument, but it can also be used within Sample Tank. But because it came out at the same time as Sample Tank 3, then it wants to be installed in the Sample Tank 3 folder. So find where that is on your computer. If you don't know where that is, then it's probably your default location. Then click on continue and it will copy those files there. And that's the first one. Then you need to do that another 15 times. And then once you've done that, open up your door of choice, select Philharmonic, add track and open it up. And if it's the first time you're opening it, it will go through the process of finding the sounds. Mine has already done that, but at this stage on yours, it will probably be searching through the sample tech library, adding the sounds one by one. Also, while you're in this stage, add another track, and this time add sample tank. It's more likely sample tank four you need to load 
despite the fact we loaded it into the sample tank 3 folder. So add sample tank 4, open that up, and as you can see here, it is building the database. So all those new Philharmonic sounds are now being imported into sample tank. Click on load instrument, and on the left here, you can see Philharmonic. So we can select that, and we have all these sounds also within sample tank. So it's pretty cool that you're able to use it within Philharmonic itself, or you can use, choose to use it in sample tank. All right, so let's have a listen to how it sounds then. To do this, I've switched over to Ableton just because it's easy to show some of the routing. So I have here on channel one, the actual plugin itself. And then the following six tracks are MIDI tracks, sending their MIDI to the plugin. And that is possible because Miroslav is 16 part multi-timbral. So if you see on the GUI itself, you have 16 lanes essentially, and they correspond to each of the 16 parts. And they are triggered by these MIDI channels here. So channel two here, clarinet, I have that sending to Philharmonic and then Philharmonic channel one. And then here, channel two, three, four, five, etc. So by the time we get to here, six, this is sending MIDI to the violin here. So I'm just gonna solo one for the moment. Let's solo the piano and have a listen to what we have. We can pan that. Let's switch that up a bit. Let's make this one the dark Philharmonic Grand. Or maybe the classical Philharmonic Grand. Excellent. We can then go over to our mix page here, and then this is viewed as a conventional mix a type arrangement if you like with effects at the top and then panning and sends and then the volume down the bottom so on this piano that we have solid we have eq comp we have a vintage eq we have a bit of acoustic resonance we have a hall reverb then we have a stereo imager below that so let's take off these two from the piano the stereo imager and the reverb and let's go across to our sends to the far right and on the first one we're going to choose reverb and then let's put this on Hall Reverb. And then right at the very end, let's put this on Stereo Imager. This is on Return 4. Let's go back to our piano, click on number 4, and then we'll turn that Send Level up. Let's now also bring in the violin. Send that to reverb also. It's sounding quite good. Let's go back to our play page. I notice up here I have duplicated the piano. I think I did that when I added the classical piano. So let's go find our clarinet, which is in solo, clarinet, and then let's choose this one. And then we'll also send this to the reverb.
Let's just maybe pan that. Bit to the left. Violin to the right. Keep the piano in the middle. Let's also add the flute to the reverb. Bit of width on that as well. Wow, that sounds absolutely fantastic. And should you wish to dig into the individual sounds more, there's also got the edit page here. We have the conventional synth features if you like. So a pair of ADSRs, you got a filter. You can even change the MIDI channels should you wish to double stack on the same MIDI. So as I said at the start, it's currently heavily discounted at audio plugin deals. So go check it out. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll be back shortly with something else. We'll see you then. Bye.